In the last episode, we had discussed how Benjamin Sisko had effectively set the foundation for what he would have to do to pull the Romulans into the war. You know, it's rather curious to me. When you rewatch In the Pale Moonlight, there's a point where he desperately tries to justify what he's doing. He says, quite emphatically, people are dying out there. Every day, worlds are struggling for their freedom, and here I am debating the finer points of morality. In the last episode, when I brought up Bashir's estimated casualty list from statistical probabilities and theorized how much this weighed on Cisco, quite a few people got very angry, assuming that I was trying to justify why he should have surrendered. One even called me a cuck, which is awesome. Great job. I'm sure your mom is proud of whom you've become. But it really wasn't that I thought Sisko should have agreed with the surrender. The previous episode really builds on his character. Here he is, desperately justifying the man he has become, and I think that the fact that he knows the numbers given by Julian Bashir previously really weighed on him, pushed him to make those decisions, to become the man we see today. But as I said last time, everything he had done up to this point was just a precursor to what was to come. The next real test. The first truly moral bankrupt choice would be in his agreement to give biomimetic gel, a highly regulated material, to someone he didn't even know and had no idea what that man was going to do. This gel could be used for anything from cloning to weapons. It was so highly regulated that even attempting to obtain it was a felony in the Federation. The biomimetic gel would be exchanged for a genuine Cardassian optolithic data rod which apparently is even far rarer than the gel. These rods were used for official business only and could only be recorded over once. To retrieve one is apparently a minor miracle. This was, in my opinion, when Cisco moved from any ambiguity of still possibly holding to Starfleet ideals into a man who would do anything to win the war, to do what was necessary, and forego any real perception of being an evolved human. After getting the optolithic rod, Garrick and Sisko would have Graythan Tolar, the man that was freed from Klingon prison, to create a hollow program, a forgery that would make it appear that the Dominion had been planning to attack the Romulans all along. Once the forgery was complete, Graython would attempt to leave immediately. Sisko would slam him against the bulkhead and tell him that he would stay until the data rod was accepted or he would be going back to prison. Threatening a man? Breaking the deal he had made? Just another brick in that road. Though hopefully this would be all worth it, this fall from grace would be justified. Everything was leading up to this. The entire point of the venture was to trick the Romulan Star Empire into joining the war. To that end, Sisko invited Senator Vrenak, one of the main architects of the peace with the Dominion, to give the data rod to. And this would be what the entire endeavor was about. He was attempting to lie to a Romulan senator so that that senator could put thousands to hundreds of thousands of loyal Romulan citizens right in front of the Dominion war machine. As the senator would arrive on Deep Space Nine, Garrick would take his leave, noting that he would do a quick search of the senator's ship for any possible intel. Of course, Sisko would advise him not to get caught and... Garrick assured him that he wouldn't. To say the senator was smug is an understatement. Sisko actually does really well with this. His performance in acting like everything was legitimate is spectacular. It's true that this story is from his perspective, so perhaps he thinks he did a lot better than he did, but still. Of course, Sisko would show the rod to the senator and he would want to examine it. And this is where we see Sisko do something completely unusual for him. Worry. He would worry if this mission was successful or not. Unfortunately, Vrenak would discover that it was a forgery and told him that in no uncertain terms that he would expose the treachery of the Federation to the Alpha Quadrant. Everything that had happened, everything that Sisko had done, that he had become, and it was all for nothing. Senator Vrenak would leave, set upon telling the Alpha Quadrant about what had happened. And Sisko would go back to his duties. Sisko would expect the worst until... It was discovered that Senator Vrenak's shuttle was destroyed. The Tal Shiar would of course point to the Dominion for this attack. Realizing what had happened, almost immediately, Sisko would confront Garrick by pummeling him. Yeah, he'd, he'd beat the crap out of him. But here's where it all came to a head. Garrick would admit that he killed the Senator, and Graythor, and he had made it so that the data rod would be discovered. The Romulans would find it, and any imperfections would be assumed to be a part of the destruction of the ship and the Romulans would enter the war. The Alpha Quadrant would most likely be saved and all it took was the death of one senator, one skeezy criminal, and the self-respect of a Starfleet officer. 
And ultimately, at the end of this episode, Sisko would agree. It was absolutely worth it. Captain Benjamin Sisko was a criminal now. He had helped with murder, the transport of illegal substances, and bribery. The mighty had fallen. But still, it was worth it. The Romulans had entered the war, and the Alpha Quadrant had won. Sisko was justified. I wanted to take a moment to discuss Gene's vision and Captain Benjamin Sisko. A lot of people do see this as a betrayal of what Gene had wanted. But honestly, for my money, I don't. I think Deep Space Nine is as realistic to Gene's vision as you can get. Take these evolved humans, idealized, and then bump them up against evil and see what happens. In Deep Space Nine, we see humans become what they are fighting to win, but we also see them regret it, hate it, despise what they have to do. They're acting very human. This is fantastic to me. This only shows that Gene's vision lives on and that even if it has to be abandoned in the short term, it's what people want and fight for. That even when they become evil, they want to be a part of the light. I don't know, maybe I'm rationalizing here, but I honestly think it epitomizes what Gene was going for. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoy videos like this, know this is how I make my bread, so please consider becoming a Patreon. I'll also have merch coming soon, so take a look out for that. And guys, don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you on the next Lore Reloaded.